Welcome to Hair Blazers, the podcast where seasoned salon owners and industry specialists share their knowledge. Our mission is to empower owners and elevate salons through conversation about what matters most to you. The number one piece of technology that drives revenue in your business is online booking. Almost 40% of our bookings last month happened online, which doesn't cost you stylist time or front desk time and makes you money while you sleep. On today's episode, we're discussing technology must-haves in the salon. Ooh, technology. Super important. Yes, indeed. Technology in the salon and why it's important. So, so many things to consider when we're talking technology. Uh, And I think we'll just start the conversation off with, it's not imperative that you have all of these in place right off the hop. Um, But I think it's a great goal to work towards to get as many as you can in because they're just going to help supplement all the hours that you're putting into the business. They're going to give you better idea. Some of them give you more insight into your business, Um, but they're important. They matter. So where do we start? I would say online booking. Yeah. Had so many different conversations, many different salon owners. I was shocked at how many of them do not use online booking for many different reasons. Yeah. So we, when we, you know, we brought online booking in, in 2017 when we opened and at that time it wasn't, it's not like it was unheard of, but there were a lot of people not doing it. And number one reason people weren't doing it. Do you remember? Uh, I would say one of the main ones is people aren't able to book the proper services online. It's not getting booked properly. They're not having enough time. I think a lot of people are just afraid of technology. I think that's, yeah, yeah, definitely one of the keys of when people are, when something's new and people aren't, are, aren't used to using it, the usually default to just not wanting to do it. Right. And I totally understand that. And I remember we have, we had these conversations quite often in setting up the online booking, which was, well, how are people going to book their appointments properly? Mm-hmm. What if they book something that mm-hmm. it wasn't supposed to be? And I think what we found is you got to just start you got and it. figure it out. And eventually you'll start seeing how the appointments are booked and you'll find ways to course correct. I believe what we did were just better explanations on the website, what the service actually is, what it entails. Um, And then working with the provider to then figure out how those get properly booked with processing times and whatnot. But uh, but bringing that on was a big deal. And I remember when we brought it on, we started out, we were booking online about 25 guests per month, which were over the moon about. (laughs) And now we're... Over 600 guests per month booking appointments online. 600 guests. And how many of those guests would have picked up the phone and called to book during your opening hours? Because yeah. I would say anytime I go to book something, it's going to be at midnight. Well, on you too, I'm sure. No, but I, you know, that's for sure. So how many guests would, would not have booked an appointment? Don't necessarily know per se. We can't say whether they would have or whether they wouldn't. But I just believe part of the entire experience for your guests to attract guests is being convenient, being accessible. And not talking to people. And some people just don't want to talk. <laughs> Yeah, great point. Great point. Um, but for sure. So we've seen, you know, obviously a huge rise in, in booking online. It's become extremely mainstream now. It's almost a must have to have. I think what we're tying um, online booking into as well, though, which I think is one of the points, one of the pieces of technology we have to talk about is your your POS system mm-hmm. and whatever system you're using to book your guests in, to track your guests history, to you know track your notes. Um, but more importantly is the reporting that you're going to be getting Mm -hmm. and the insights it gives you into their business. Naomi and I were actually just working with somebody this last week whose POS system gave them very, very little data. It was more of just an appointment scheduling system. Um, And, you know, key to, you know, key to finding a successful system that's going to work for you is one price matters, right? Um, We started with shout out to Forest, Forest Lawn Software. We started off with Stars. Great, great program, great company to work with. Um, We, uh, just naturally outgrew them. And now we're working with a company called Zenodi. Um, very robust reporting, but it's given us the ability to look into the numbers. I truly believe numbers tell part of the story of what's happening in the salon. And that's given us the opportunity to increase sales or increase productivity or become better at processes. Um, you were a big part of the switch. So tell, why don't you tell me what was, you know, what were the benefits you found or you're finding from having a robust reporting system? Yeah. So I think that anytime a salon owner hears the idea of switching POS systems or salon software. It's, it's scary. terrifying. It's scary. It's like I'd rather stay with you know the familiar than stay move on to something. Um, it takes time. I mean, it was several months before we were even starting to understand the capabilities that Zenodi um, offered to us. And while Zenodi is amazing, you know, Zenodi might not be for every single company. We have um, a marketing team and we have um, admin people that can really help us use it to its full potential. So it's finding the one that fits your business. 
um, and then using it to the full potential. And, you know, for sure, disclaimer on all of this is you're never going to find the perfect software. It's That's never, it's never perfect. Yeah. There's always something that mm -hmm. doesn't work. Um, but for the most part, it really needs to click with your business and it really needs to give you insight into what's actually happening from your, uh, from your role in the salon with actually coaching mm -hmm. stylists. The reportings definitely helped you out a lot. Yes. How would you do it without it really? Yeah. So that's what I think is a good idea. If you're looking to switch over to a new software, you know, take time to write down like what are the most important things to me that I want to see in salon software. And, you know, if you're, you know, you have two chairs or three chairs and maybe you don't need a ton of reporting, that's not going to be the most important on your list. So you got to kind of figure out what are your top must haves and then start working towards discussing with different companies. And don't feel like you have to just make a jump right away. Make sure that they're the ones that you want to work with and uh, and go through you know the work with them. First. Yeah, I think key you know key to finding that is also making sure that when you're researching these companies is what is your interaction like mm -hmm. with the people who are selling you the software. Do they seem supportive? Are they responsive? Do they get back to you right away? I remember when we when we first brought on Forrest, there was, um, I'm not going to mention the names, there was a company that I had used in the past. I had reached out to them and I felt like I was actually an inconvenience to them. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, this is going to be a big undertaking. There's going to be a lot of work involved. If I'm feeling this way now and we're not even a paying customer at this point, yeah. you know, what's it going to be like afterwards? So, so we've talked... Um, POS system, POS mm -hmm. system typically is going to be integrated with your online booking system. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also find, uh, you know, other areas where it'll support you. And marketing is definitely one. Yep. Automation is definitely, you know, a, a big, something to really be looking out for today because it definitely increases productivity. Just thinking of all the things, like as technology moves on, find all the things technology can do for you that a human no longer has to do. Like, those sort of things. Or it helps that human be more or productive in doing it. Absolutely. Right? There's some Cuts down not. time. Of course. Um, I think it's a combination of both. One other thing I want to mention before we move on from um, software yeah. is find a company also that's not stuck in their ways. Find a company that if, if you say, I like this, but I, I want to see this, they're always like moving on and, and changing with the times in the industry. And they're willing to like work on new projects always making things better. Yeah, it, it evolves and, and you hope that, you know, these companies evolve with, our industry evolves, I should say. You hope that these companies evolve along with it because as a company, we're always evolving. We're growing, changing, learning new things. And you want all the technology you're using to keep pace with that. It should actually even be maybe even ahead of you. So mm -hmm. you have something to strive for, something to work towards, but at least be keeping, you know, pace with you along that growth, uh, growth curve. Cool. So POS system check we've got online booking um back to online booking for just a, a second mm -hmm. if you're not doing online booking right now ask yourself a question which is why you're not doing it and i'm gonna almost guess that you can't come up with a good enough reason not to and if you can just do it anyway <laughs> and if you yeah exactly if you can come with that reason try give it a, you know give it a shot ask salons reach out to salons that are using online booking and ask them what their experience has been mm -hmm. um what challenges they went through and salon owners, I hope you're willing to share. I think mm -hmm. that's always great to share information, share knowledge. Um, but do your research, find out, because if you're not doing it, you're really missing out on a huge segment of the market. I would even say when we decided to start online booking, when we first opened up our first salon, I was even a little bit skeptical and worried what it was going to look course. like. And after it started, it was like, this is so easy. And it's not like you can't go in and change things. If somebody, you know, you can look over, review the appointments that are booked, but you'd be shocked at the business you're losing out on without that. Cool. Next. Vish, color management, color wastage. So this has had a tremendous impact yes. on our business. Uh, and this is one that you actually see the benefit financially from pretty quickly. Very quickly. Pretty quickly. So a little bit about Vish. Yeah. So we actually just did a podcast segment not long ago with Josh oh, right. Howard, yes, who's yes, the CEO yes. of Vish. Um, he gave a lot of great feedback. So Josh gave a lot of statistics about how color management works and what it can do for your salon. So why don't you talk about some things it did for our salon well, as a salon owner? Save the, saved us money yeah. right, right off the hop. It, and I think we were very conscious of product wastage before we brought Vish on. Yeah. Um, you know, we were always trying to hit a, a certain benchmark that we had that we had set in place. Um, but for whatever reason, we couldn't necessarily maintain it. Wasn't sustainable. Right. The benchmark that we're setting sometimes we did not it. consistent. Sometimes we'd be you know over. Sometimes we'd be way over. Um, and I think just the biggest challenge is just actually not knowing. 
Yes. Just not knowing what the wastage is. You have an idea, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to do your best to figure that out, but you actually don't really know. And what Vish gave us the opportunity to do is obviously you can look into Vish and get a lot more information on what they do, but it really breaks the numbers down for you. And it really breaks the numbers down quite simply. Um, and not only that, it also helps manage your, your formulas and whatnot, integrates into a lot of POS systems. Um, but what it does is it really tells us how much color is going down the sink. And then the beauty of it What's makes adjustments yeah. for the next time that guest comes in and gives you a different, not a different formula, but different amounts to use in that formula to then apply to that guest. Right. So it's course correcting the error of wastage. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually really giving you insight into how much you're wasting. And once you know, knowledge is you know very powerful. Once you know, then we can meet with the team, share with the team. Mm -hmm. And it's also incredible what it's done to get the team on board to kind of everybody you know, getting to this benchmark that we're trying to hit. Why don't you talk a little bit about what that was like getting people on yeah. board? Because again, one of the hardest parts, implementation. So I feel like there's two sides to this. <laughs> there's the the owner side and a lot of owners thinking, my team, like, how am I going to get them on board with this new technology? It sounds like it's going to take a lot of time. You know, they don't have it. So as far as being a stylist goes, like you'd already brought up, once you enter the formulas and weigh your colors in Vish, it keeps that exact formula for the next time your guest comes in. There's no longer writing down color formulas or just trying to remember, you know, a formula. If a guest says, oh, remember the formula you did three visits ago, which could have been months and months ago, you can go back and check it. You can favorite formulas. But one of the coolest things is, like you said, it weighs your wastage. So if you mix up a 40 gram formula and you finish the new growth and you come back and you weigh your bowl and there's 10 grams in the bowl, the next time it's going to break your formula down to only mix 30 grams. So it's great all around, makes things really quick. So I would say that in the beginning, takes a little bit more time um, just to get your guests set up in it. But in the end, it saves a ton of time for the stylist. So really important. Yeah. And I think all these pieces of technology we're talking about, um, really great to have regardless of what size of salon you are. So um, whether you're, you know, a six, 12 chair salon, or if it's just two of you in the salon, I think it really matters because every dollar counts. Mm -hmm. um, profit margins in salon can be really tight and anything you're putting back towards the bottom line that just would have gone down the sink is a huge win. Um, but in our case, we're seeing thousands of dollars being saved per year mm -hmm. and we're able to take those thousands of dollars and do great things with them, whether it be education or upgrades to the salon, whatever, whatever you want to put that money towards, it's great to have it from simply just reweighing your wastage at the end of the day, I guess is what it boils down to. And making sure employees realize this is what you're getting from it as well. Let's talk, let's talk internal communications. Um, yeah. And I think, again, uh, you know, the more you're growing as a salon, the more important it is to keep good communication. Right now in the salon, we're using uh, an app called Slack. Yep. So why don't you tell us a little bit how we use Slack and, you know, what its purpose is and how it benefits us. Slack, I would say we're not even using it to its full potential, but just in general, how we use it in our business, every single employee is part of the app. So every time a new employee comes on, we add them. So we have a general channel where we can type in whatever kind of communication we want to get across to everybody. And then you can make separate channels. So say you have a marketing channel or you have an education channel, and then you invite people that need to be in each of those groups. So it's a great way to make sure if you're communi communicating something, it's getting across to everyone you need. It yeah. To to. That was our biggest challenge yeah. when we started out. And even with a small team of three, four people, yeah. you know, not knowing if someone saw it in yeah. the email, not knowing if somebody yeah. got the text or maybe they did get the text. They said they didn't get the text. This way we know everyone within um, this domain in Slack is getting the information that they need. It lives somewhere. It's organized. And you're right. We're not using it to its full potential yet, but always something to strive towards uh, and, and work towards. Um, one thing that I feel like Slack has, has done for our company is really streamline that communication where anybody can use it, not just management, not just, um, you know, frontline or senior stylists, it's anybody has a voice yeah. that they need to share something. They're able to speak to the entire company um, through just one app, which is great. And I think, again, um, implementation, when we first implemented Slack, you know, you'd get a lot of radio silence when you'd post something, um, just practicing and continuing to reiterate why it's important really helps get the team on board. And then they're able to see the benefits and everyone's happy. And there's no excuses. Didn't you see the Slack message yeah. that I sent? 
I, I usually don't. You don't. I'm the one who doesn't see <laughs> it. Um, that was just, actually, yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah, no, I, you know, it's a great piece of technology for sure. And the basic, is it not free? The basic yeah, version basic is, is free. free. And I think we're almost ready to move up to the next one, um, which is the Pro. And, it, and it ends up being like $7.95 a month US. So yeah. lots of capabilities there. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. All right. Well, let's talk about a new piece of technology mm-hmm. that we just brought on. Really excited. Um, Maya. 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 M-Y-A. Did not take us long to make a decision on this. Let's talk about Maya, what it is, and we actually had Katie on the, the podcast and as well too, right? We actually started on Katie's podcast. That's so we right. met Katie we Willage. Did. I am terrible with time. So in the last two couple years. years. <laughs> yeah. Um, At least a couple years she ago. She invited us to be on her podcast. We had won that Salon 200 award. Um, and it was a great experience. She's very knowledgeable. Um, I learned after she's a salon owner. Just one of those people that you can tell really knows her stuff. And so this is something that she actually introduced to us. She created it for her own salon. Um, Something that a lot of salon owners I feel have an issue with is new guest retention. Yeah. New guest retention. Apparently this benchmark is a 50% benchmark all over. And it's difficult to get to that. Yeah. uh, If not near impossible from our past experience. You know, it's elusive. Everyone talks about it and it's an industry benchmark. I don't think we've ever had a 50%. Consistent 50% consistent, guest consistent. retention. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, so we're always looking at new ways to help our new guest retention. So one thing that we came up with was these new guest videos. Yes. Um, with the help of Tim Belcher, he kind of spurred the idea for us. And so we started sending out personalized new guest videos to each and every guest that came in. New guest. Um, sorry, each and every new guest that came in. And our stylists would do these personally. Great. I think that's really helped us a lot with retaining some of our new guests. Yeah, maybe we'll just quickly just touch on that. New guest videos, after a stylist sees a new guest, they'll take a few minutes, record a very raw thank you video for the guest. It doesn't have to be scripted. It doesn't have to be overproduced. It's sometimes just back in the lunchroom. Hey, thanks so much for coming in. Really appreciate appreciate you. Maybe some piece of information they wanted to share, styling tips or whatnot. And that's it. So that was like really our like our first initiative to really, yeah. you know, boost new guest retention. Yeah. And, I, you know, great piece of customer service. But Maya has more specifics. So maybe you just jump a little bit to more about Maya. Yeah. So Katie is a salon owner. She was trying to figure out how to up her new guest retention within her own salon or salons. And this is something that she came up with. And when she realized, we'll talk about it in a moment, but when she realized how successful it was in maintaining and retaining new guests, she decided to put it out there for other salons to use. And we got really excited about it. I remember Naomi and I were... um, we're doing a demo and both of us were like, okay, how do we get Rob to bring this on? Like, this is, this is a must have. It was a pretty simple conversation. Yeah. I, and you, and you did, I think, see how important um, it could be in the future. So did you guys really plan it like that? We, how we are we going to get him on board? We kind of did. How are we going to get him on was board? We were scheming, but I, we didn't think it was going to be a, hu- a That's huge not a thing. Real th- okay. Okay. So, you know what? The beauty of Maya is its simplicity. When you really think about it, you know, the, the basics of Maya is matching the guest with the right with stylist. stylist. And I think typically that's where, you know, that's where things can fall apart is if the person sitting in your chair isn't really aligned with who you are mm-hmm. or who want who you want to be as a stylist, maybe based on the types of services they want or their personality. I don't know. Price point. Price point. A whole bunch of different yeah. things. Like the, the There's a questionnaire. So sorry. Integrates into your website. Mm-hmm. There's a questionnaire that you take. Asks a whole bunch of questions. Some of them are kind of fun. Mm-hmm. You ask, answer these questions and it'll match you with Three stylists, three stylists based on all the criteria yes. that you had put in that's important to you. And we've found so far this is this is working really well. Guests have been very responsive to it. Mm-hmm. We've I had some see. guests come in and say, oh, I match with you. Like, <laughs> to, right? It's, it's really nice to see. Exactly. So we've just started. We're going to keep a very close eye on our new guest retention. I have a really good feeling that you know we're going to see an impact. Um, and hopefully we get to the elusive 50%. That's what we're working towards. That would be great. Um, a couple other great points with bringing on Maya as well is those Maya guests that come in on average um, are spending more than your average guest would be spending. Your average new guest would be spending when they come in. Yeah. Which is which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of times they say you can really tell. Salons that have had this for a while say you can tell when a Maya guest comes in because the stylist usually clicks with them so well. 
Um, and that might not necessarily happen if they're just picking somebody off of a bio right. or off of the website. So the questions um, that they're asking are not just about the services that they want and the price point that they want, but also like love language questions and what type of personality do you have and what do you like to do? Um, and of course, they're not going to share their proprietary um, algorithm, but it seems to be really on point. Yeah. And just knowing Katie, we've had a chance to have a yeah. couple of conversations. She's very passionate about it. She's mm -hmm. brilliant. She's a consumer. Mm -hmm. Like she's got a really good understanding of the impact that this can have. And she's standing behind it. So we're very happy to try it out. And, you know, another point just to make about, I think, all of the technology we've talked about so far is there's no real long-term commitment mm -hmm. that you have to sign up for. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is month to month. If I'm not month to month. If I'm not mistaken, Vish is month to month. That's a good question. Pretty sure, <laughs> sure. Pretty sure they yeah. are. Yeah, pretty sure, sure they are. Month month, yeah. Slack is free. Your POS system is typically month to month. Not and you already have it. Contract. So use exactly. the online booking part. Uh, and same with Maya. So, yeah. you know, no need to worry about being locked into long-term contracts. And if the technology you're looking at is a long-term contract, then that's just another consideration that you have to make. But for the most part, you can go into these relatively easy. Anyhow. Yeah. And I mean, for, for us... We didn't bring all these on all at once. That's um, yeah. That's the other thing. It could be very overwhelming if you decide to do that. Um, I think each one is is quite a yeah. bit, right? So uh, overwhelming is one way to put it. Um, but taking the time with each piece of technology that you're bringing in, um, and making sure that the rollout really works, not just for you and for your business, but the entire team. Get, I think that's one of the key pieces: getting everyone on board. Right? Agreed. Agreed. Have to have everyone on board. It just doesn't work. So I think all the things that we've spoken about, great opportunity to, you know, up your game, increase, a lot of these will just increase profit directly. Some of them will increase or have effects that will in the long term increase profit. You might not see them right up front um, and ultimately build brand and deliver a really high level of customer service, or at least give you the opportunity to deliver a really high level of customer service. So we'll provide links to all the pieces of technology that we've discussed today. And if you have any more that you're interested in learning about, please let us know. Thank you for listening. Leave a review, share this episode, and tune in next time. We appreciate you.